You know, one of the frustrating aspects of two or more people using the same fridge is that when you go to put something into it, there's no more room. <laughs> and why? Because of the vegetables. <laughs> Every fridge has these drawers that are supposed to keep vegetables fresh. How does that work? I mean, it's not airtight. There's no laser gun in there killing the germs and bacteria. It's no different than the rest of the fridge. Anyway, you can't stop vegetables from going bad. They were bad to begin with. <laughs> but you can't just take them up and throw them away, can you? Or somebody will be very upset. Somebody who can do things to you in the night and not the things you were hoping for. <laughs> well, here's a way to get rid of your vegetables without laying a finger on them. I punched a hole in the back of the fridge. I ran this vacuum cleaner hose right into my vegetable drawer. And I don't mean a normal household vacuum cleaner. I'm talking heavy industrial. That baby could suck a football through a fire hose. All right. Let's get rid of those vegetables. Okay, uh, my mistake there, I, I hooked it up to the output side of the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. Uh, tune in next week. I'm going to show all you cat lovers how to make your own kitty litter. <laughs>
Well, that depends. On what? On whether we're gonna lie to you. You know, Mike, everybody lies to somebody sometime. Shouldn't Dean Martin sing that? Well, you know what? You don't have to sell me on the positive aspects of lying, Mr. Green. Lying is what got me to where I am today. Hold on bail? Yeah, okay, okay well, look, I, I know lying is wrong, okay? I only lie when I have to. I only lie when I have to? Who'd lie if they didn't have to? Pap Shaughnessy. But women lie, too. They just do it differently than men. Men and women lie differently? Absolutely. See, women will lie to make other people feel better. Men lie to make themselves feel better. What do you mean? Well, men lie about winning. You know, if they're in a fight or even if they're in an accident. And they lie about fishing. Where'd you hear that? I read it somewhere. You're lying. I'm sure I am. See, see, you knew that. You knew I was lying. See? Men expect men to lie about stuff. Yeah, you know what? It's kind of like exaggerating. Yeah. Like, you know, you, you, say you, you hit your thumb with a hammer. Yeah. Well, it winds up by the time you're finished that you've duct taped your arm back on after a bandsaw accident, you know? Everybody knows you're lying, but they still ooh and aw just the same, right? It's, it's, it's a masculine trait. Yeah. Men lie to each other. Okay, I know that, all right? <laughs> what I'm asking is, do men lie to their wives? You know, I, I, I suppose it has happened. Well, I mean, how can you build a relationship if you're lying to each other? Oh, no, no, Mike. Once you get married, you're not trying to build a relationship. No, no, no. you're in survival mode. Let me ask. So when she asks you if that dress looks too small on her, you lie. But that's perjury. Lying is against the law. Not when it's done in self-defense. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> hey, I got great news. All-wheel drive and four-wheel steering is not just for the super rich anymore. Now the super poor can have it, too. Thanks to today's project on Handyman Corner. So I figured between these two K-cars, it should be able to make almost one drivable vehicle. That's because a K-car has no real frame to speak of and the front-wheel drive. You could say it's spineless with a lot of dead weight at the back end. It's really the Dalton Humphrey of automobiles. First thing we got to do is downsize each of these babies. It's the exact opposite of the way they downsize the government. We're gonna keep the part that works. <laughs> Don't be shy with the duct tape on this job, because it's the only thing holding the unit together. And there's nothing worse than nailing a speed bump only to have your back end break off and start chasing you. <laughs> and there we have the makings of our four-wheel drive, all-wheel steering vehicle. And here's an added bonus. Stick the back ends together, you got yourself a dandy portable garden shed. <laughs> okay, the big jobs are all done. Now we just have the minor details of connecting the two sets of controls. <laughs> Okay, now this took a bit of brain work, but I think I'm okay now. <laughs> See, for both cars to work together, you gotta get the one doing the exact opposite of what the other one is doing. Kinda like a marriage. <laughs> so I got the steering wheels hooked together so that when I turn this one to the left, the other one goes to the right. <laughs> this baby turns so sharp, you gotta back off on the gas or you'll run into yourself. <laughs> Same thing with the turn signals. I signal right on my end, But the real trick is the gear shift. I hook them up so that when I go into drive at my end, it goes into reverse at the other end. <laughs> oh, sure, I got a couple of problems, like I got no trunk, no brake lights, and no exhaust pipe. But that's a small price to pay to be driving with cutting edge technology. <laughs> so remember, if the women don't find you, <laughs> that's a million. <laughs> need money from their parents, and that's fine. 
And generally, parents will always open their wallets for their offspring for any request that doesn't contain the word bail. <laughs> but you may be at the point where they're talking about a different kind of money. I mean, the inheritance. Huh? <laughs> the big post-dated check. Well, this is where I draw the line. One of the few times when my advice is, shoot the works, baby. <laughs> I'm saying, spend it, huh? <laughs> if you can't take it with you, why pack it? <laughs> that leather chair that massages your back while it plays in a Gata de Vida, you go for that. <laughs> <huh>? <laughs> that pickup truck sits up so high you can see where you're going half an hour before you get there. <laughs> Bring her up. And maybe it's time to put in that wet bar beside the pool. And when that's done, put in the pool beside the wet bar. <laughs> the point is, whatever you do, don't feel guilty about it. You raised those kids and you paid for them. Whatever money you have now is yours. It's left over. And leftovers never tasted so sweet. <laughs> Remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt the Red Green Show so that I may bring you the following important environmental message. Greetings, campers. Ranger Gord here with another one of my patented wilderness safety tips. Hey, now, here's a pleasant scene. A couple of backwood donut brains having some fun on the diving board. However, what they might not understand is the dangerous nature of this sport of diving if taken to its extreme level. I am, of course, talking about the terrifying overlook sport of cliff diving. Now, before any dive is attempted from a height of this magnitude, one must first discern whether there are any rocks or other debris in the landing area. Oh. Well, Ooh, it's a good thing Harold pointed out the danger down there for us, eh, Red? That's another diving tip. Always go with a buddy. Now, come on, Red. Let's find a safer spot. Uh, Gord. Uh, whoa. Uh, this is pretty high, don't you think? Uh, you know, I mean, a guy could, uh, could get hurt on a jump like this, huh? Oh, come on, Red. Don't be such a wuss. Folks, it's a proven fact that if you play a sport afraid, you are more likely to get injured. And you don't want to get injured, do you, Little Red? Ah, uh, no, not really. <laughs> Good. So remember, kids, never take a ride on the wing of a plane unless properly licensed to do so. It's just common sense, isn't it? Well, great news. We managed to catch ourselves a possum. All we had to do was set the trap upside down. <laughs> so now we're in business, and the possum day thing is really picking up a lot of momentum. Actually, the TV station up in Port Asbestos said they're going to send the crew down unless there's anything important going on that day. <laughs> or anything going on that day. <laughs> Oh, Uncle Red. What? Oh, 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 there's been a possum napping. Well, that's what they do, Harold. <laughs> no, no. Someone has kidnapped our possum. What? Yeah, we think it's the guys from Caribou Lodge. They're so jealous. They're jealous of us? Mm -hmm. That's hard to do, Harold. Well, don't you worry. Don't you worry. Because maybe we don't have a real possum. Yeah. But we still have our possum mascot. What? What? <laughs> Mike, where is your pride? Oh, this, should be, this counts towards my 100 hours of uh, community service. <laughs> this is not going to work, Carol, okay? Well, okay, okay. How about Mike sneaks back into Caribou Lodge and gets our possum back? Yeah, because I look just like one. Look, watch. <laughs> Have you seen enough? You're too late. <laughs> Kind of an unusual adventure this time. Winston had just finished the day's work, and as per usual, he was uh, checking his cash, and there was a small crime wave at that moment. The gun comes in, and he's, he's, this never happens around here, but as it turns out, just a water gun from Walter. 
Well, now Winston grabs that and takes after him. This is how things start, and this is a real lesson of how the world works with the arms race and so on. <laughs> Winston has the little gun. He's coming sneaking up on Walter, a little payback time, but Walter turns down. He has a much bigger gun, and he unloads that on him. So now Winston grabs that one. Now he's escalated her a bit, so Walter's going to take it up to the next level. Winston comes around there. He, I don't think he's in the wood pile, uh, Winston, and I don't think he's in that empty trailer either. And I don't think he's there or there. Here he comes, and you know, I'm thinking he may have something for you, but Winston, first of all, fires. Winston's out of water, but don't worry, here's some. <laughs> Now it's gunfight at the OK Corral. Very good turnout for a Tuesday. Oh, and Walter's taking it to another level. Winston, mm, we've all had days like that, haven't we? Oh, boy. So now Winston goes down to the store and gets something real super duper. Pumps that up. Oh, yeah, baby. He's ready to go. He's going nuclear. <laughs> what he didn't realize was that Walter had been to the same store just before Winston and had gone with the double extra large. <laughs> A lot of water in that thing. As Winston's pants were about to find out. So now Walter is going to the maximum here. He's got the backpack tanks on there and the super howitzer level. And Winston just has a little gun, but he doesn't seem to be worried. He's actually waving Walter over. He's ready to take him on. Walter can't believe it. You're going to take me out with that little thing. Look at this baby. I got like a bazooka here. I mean, you're going to, you are going to drown. You are just going to drown. Winston says, no, 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 no. Wait a sec, wait a sec. It's not the size of the gun, you know. Check the hose. Take a look. See that? Yeah. Yeah, 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 uh, and up over, it's, oh, it's not plugged into the chair, no, and it's not, oh boy. I think this is Walter's way of surrendering. There you go, let her go. that over the years your dashboard has changed from a bunch of dials and gauges into nothing but idiot lights. That can't be a compliment. And who can remember what they all mean? Whenever I look at that symbol, I don't know whether I'm supposed to add oil or make three wishes. So I'm going to make a few alterations. First of all, I'm going to put in sensible signs, and I'm also going to have a way that I can add fluid without having to get out of the car. Heck, without even having to stop. And I'm going to do that by switching from something nobody understands, the cars of today, to something everybody understands, breakfast. Okay, first thing you want to do is get yourself half a dozen of these maple syrup dispensers they use in restaurants. I would recommend you get these from any dimly lit 24-hour diner. The key component here, see, is the spring-loaded nozzle they got on the top of her there. Just add a wire to this baby, fill it with the appropriate fluid, and you're on your way to happy motoring. Each of these bottles is filled with a different automotive fluid, and I got them mounted over each of these filler tubes. <laughs> and I ran all the wires through the firewall, and in keeping with the breakfast motif, I attached a picture onto each wire that would associate a fluid deficiency with a breakfast food. <laughs> now, even for your car, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Okay, here we go. See, now that light means that I need oil. Oil has got to be grease. Grease, well, that has to be bacon. I'm bringing home the bacon. And after that boils over, well, that's got to be coffee. The transmission starts grinding. That'll be sausages. <coughs> and if your engine starts frying, well, that would be the eggs. This baby is toast. <laughs> this is the codfish, Mr. Green. <laughs> you sure he's in there, Mike? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's in there, all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, let me see him, Red. Huh? Yeah, yeah. 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 Uncle Red! Uncle Red! <laughs> the guys from Caribou Lodge, they pulled the old switcheroo. Yeah. 
What are you talking about, Harold? The possum. It's not a possum. Sure looks like a possum, doesn't it, guys? Huh? Yeah, it looks like a possum. It acts like a possum. Of course, that's what you get when you shave a skunk. <laughs> yeah. Did you smell anything, Winston? Oh, yeah, sorry, I came straight from work. <laughs> Is that a new rug? Green <laughs> time up around. Yeah, you guys, go ahead, I'll be right down. Oh. <sighs> if my wife is watching, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting, and I'm gonna have to sleep in the garage tonight, even though we didn't have an argument. <laughs> so wait a sec. The next time we do have an argument, I want to count this as a credit. <laughs> and the rest of you, thanks for watching. On behalf of myself and Harold and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge, keep your stick on the ice. All right. Wando, Omni, Flunkus, Mortai. Sit down. <laughs> All right, bow your heads for the man's prayer. I'm a, a man, man, but I, I can, can change, change if, if I, I have, have to, to, I guess. <laughs> okay, man, we're gonna keep this meeting pretty short because a few of us have to take off all our clothes and burn them. <laughs> What's going on? We're changing. Why? Because we have to, I guess. <laughs>